that was made uh, for some storm damage that we had uh, behind Canada Court and Southern Cross. Um, it's not normal. This is not land that CLCA owns. It's not land. Uh, it's technically city of Dallas land that's leased back via Rockwall. And so it's kind of a no man's land. We've been mowing it for a couple of decades for free for the residents, even though it's uh, not our property. Um, so we're always careful in these kinds of situations as to what we're committing in the neighborhood uh, to, but in this situation, we felt like it was the right thing to do to get it resolved quickly uh, for the residents along Canada and um, Southern Cross. And so we had an expense for some uh, tree debris and removal. So um, we ratify that. I'll make a motion to improve the expense. Second by Bruce. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then lastly, um, uh, there was a, I believe due to the freeze, there was a pool pump at the small pool that, that broke, and there was a slight uh, adjustment in the price that we were quoted uh, to replace it. And so that was also voted on so we could get it done. Because the intent is to open the pools up as quickly as possible. So, uh, I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, additional expense, which I think was less than a thousand dollars. It was, uh, it was yeah. 15. 15 yeah. So the total cost of the pump pool pump now is 3500 $3, Uh Again, this is a uh, supply and demand. Yes. Prices are going Prices. Yeah. So the pool All pumps right. are just. A big demand right now. Well, so many of them broke during the um, Motion to approve that. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> now, next we would be going into our owner visitor form, but we haven't been here today. Val's with us, and so we're going to skip quickly to his portion of the update so we can get him back to operations and make sure that he can execute that event for on, on behalf of all of us. And then we'll move into the owner visitor form and then back into the report section. So that's a little bit of a change from what our agenda was. Val, you want to take a lead? All right. Thank you, uh, everyone. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, real quick, we'll go through high level March. I know Bruce is going to do more of a detailed financial report. Uh, Yacht Club had a pretty good month of March. We outperformed uh, revenues uh, by about 3%, which was a very strong performance. Um, Obviously, we had a lot of upsides in the business growing really quickly after Governor Abbott opened up uh, Texas very quickly on March 2nd, taking effect March 10th. Uh, it did put a lot of stress on the business and, and keeping up with increased demand as uh, we were still at, at staffing levels for the capacity that we were at uh, prior to the change in restrictions. So it was a good, it was a good month to outperform revenues. Uh, Bank was performed very strong. They outperformed our budget. Uh, by nearly 15,000, uh, which is very good for this early in the year, considering we opened in October when there were no banquets booked because we didn't, uh, we were coming out of a renovation with, uh, I believe it was 75% restrictions and we dropped back down to 58 shortly after reopening in October. Uh, so overall, there's a lot of positive indicators despite some of the challenges we've had with staffing uh, to stay at those levels. Uh, I want to Thank a lot of the residents for and customers for their patience in navigating through the last couple of weeks. Our first weekend when we lost our TM was a very tough one. The Easter weekend, uh, club was very very busy. Uh, we simply didn't have the staff here to, to keep up with the demand. Uh, we lost then on top of that, lost several more staff in the kitchen and uh, in the service staff. So we've been operating on a limited menu, limited service to be able to meet the demand for the business that we can. 
and slowly ramp back up the menu and everything. So the mode we're in right now is only temporary. Uh, it is going to continually and progressively improve. Um, and that's where the staff that we have, plus the new staff coming in will be trained up and then we'll be expanding. So we're going to be posting all of the updates on our menus and offerings uh, on Facebook, on our the, the Yacht Club channel and uh, Facebook page. So that's where we've been posting. We'll continue to post in there. Uh, as we said, banquets are growing very fast. We've got one upstairs again this afternoon. Uh, had another nice one last night. Those will all be uh, nice those when it when it affects a public room closure, those are also being posted on the calendar on the website. So if anybody wants to go see what area the club may be impacted by events, oh, as soon as she books an event, she posts it up there on the uh, on the website calendar. If it, it results in closing of rooms normally open to the public, like the last I just can't enter that. That would be so weird. As far as the uh, act, events and activations coming up, uh, we will continue doing the uh, our normal uh, activations on the weekdays, wind down Wednesday, Taco Thursday, steak night. We'll continue uh, as we increase our staffing uh, plan. We're going to continue to grow the menu back to its normal. Uh, our national food and beverage director will be in town again uh, this coming week, and we'll basically be, be doing a menu assessment uh, and and coming out with menu revisions as we navigate into the summer. Uh, one of the things that all, all of us are facing is rising costs of proteins because of uh, supply supply chain through the pandemic. So we'll be revising menus in general to, to meet those demands as well. Uh, brunches uh, will resume at some point uh, in April. Tomorrow, we're going to reopen. We're not going to do brunch, but we will open for lunch service. So it'll be the same menu that we've been offering. So we're going to have food service starting again at noon tomorrow. Uh, again, thank you for bearing with us as we've been trying to get the kitchen staffed up to, cut, to complete two services and two shifts. So that will start tomorrow. Uh, today, after this meeting, or the the beverage service will start, but lunch or food service will start tonight at four o'clock dinner. Uh, Mother's Day brunch will be announced later this week uh, when our culinary team meets with John, our <laughs> food director uh, from home office to figure out what our best offering for Mother's Day will be. Uh, live music, I know there's been questions about that. That will resume as well um, when the ballroom availability is there and, and we can um, set up the concepts. We're going to be changing genres and, and modifying that for, for different tastes and different uh, appetites for music. The uh, general manager update, um, happy to announce we did make an offer to a GM uh, last week. He accepted the offer. Um, he is completing giving his notice and final uh, weeks of work at his current employer. His start date at the Yacht Club will be May 3rd. I will be here uh, several weeks after that to complete his training and onboarding and getting him acclimated, uh, plus also helping him through uh, staffing up, recruiting, menu changes, and all the things that he's going to need help with to stay focused on dinner services, Mother's Day, and all the events coming up. Father's Day will be on it pretty soon after he starts as well. Uh, so he is an uh, industry veteran, comes from the hospitality industry, has a degree in hospitality uh, management, comes from a high-end garden brand restaurant in uptown Dallas, lives here in the East Rockwall community, which is also very important to us. Uh, and more information on him and his start date will come out also to our Facebook page. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll release you to get back to, <laughs> to the right. work for us. Thank you. Can I ask the question? Excuse me for a second. I'm so sorry. We can barely hear. We have the sound on all the way. So I don't know if somebody's, somebody's not in front of the mic. It was paid for Kemper in, in oh, March. I'm sorry. In, I, didn't, I, I didn't hear what was paid to Kemper in March. I it's our we should, we can, more than normal, but I just kind of wanted to know. I'm just curious. Our, we, our can't is, hear, we can't hear. Our, <laughs> I know that. It's <laughs> what what was our profit or loss for Yacht Club? Yeah. I know you're sure. fixing to leave, but yeah, she, she nobody was, else would know. Yeah, that. it was, was 32000 mm -hmm. lost. Okay. Uh, and 
Do we use state your name, please, so we have it on the record? It is better. No, I would say we use state your name. So we have oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> This for the record, for the record, so we have it on the record. I'm okay. sorry, I'm gonna ask questions. I got it. Ah. Linda Honeycat, if you want to know what we Thanks, So, I have a question. I want to understand that three percent you were talking about. You said there was a three percent what now? Revenue. We outperform budgeted revenue by three percent. What is our budget if we're 32,000 in loss? That's the so the loss that it takes into account for cost of goods, payroll, and operating expenses. We outperform revenue account by that. Can I ask questions? <laughs> uh, I was wondering if the camper association or the, the camper could cooperate with the people here, members, and ask them what they would like to have to make the club go up. We are the one who come here all the time, you know, more than this. And pay for it. And pay for it. Right. So we need for y'all to talk to the people here, the members, the ones who's paying, what we would like to have here. Not just revenues from outside. This is every day. Yeah, we, we, we did a pretty extensive survey back in 2019 when we started our work and we're gonna continue listening, but we're gonna to listen to everyone collectively. And there's a lot of different voices giving us a lot of information and we're we're taking all that into feedback for our plan. Thousand members, I'm pretty sure there is lots of them who would like to have more things here, not yes, just dinner. Exactly, and as you can imagine with over a thousand people, there's several varying versions of what they Still want. Still more, who comes here than the other side who doesn't come here? Yeah. We're balancing all the feedbacks to build in our program. Can you please state your name and address? Brad Batista on 24 period. No. It is part of the protocol, so that's all. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Well, I'm sorry, I made a comment. Deborah Morrison, 436 Columbia Drive. Anything else for Bill? He needs to get back to work. Thank you. Yeah, I've asked him a couple of these. I couldn't keep people out of the club and did it. I'm just wondering. Yeah. What? I'm wondering about that. Keep the people out of the club. People live here, take this. Why can't they have to get that club? Like any restaurant, any professional restaurant operation. This is my club. I'll pay for this club. When you kick me out, this will be a big ass fight. I guarantee you. We're not we're not gonna have any threats here. No. Well, that's what's gonna happen if you, you kick people out, it's not right. We haven't kicked anyone out. We closed at one time for an event. But you, you, I've had people say they got kicked out of the club because we drank too much. That's a TABC law. It's a <clears throat> Texas law. Exactly. Yeah, this that's is not this status. is not some <laughs> this didn't have to be well, that was a problem. There's a law. The TABC has strict laws on uh, serving out. Pardon? I know that TABC. Okay, know. then you shouldn't have an issue with it. It's just, you know, it's, you know they, they shouldn't be able to come. They can't come back to the club. They absolutely have the right to do that. And any any restaurant facility has the right to do, to do that if there are people that are being disruptive to offers. Right. Is there a you know, it's just, you know, it's not a dive bar. And what is your name? I think it's William Bowery. Where do you live, William? 15, uh, it's in 13 right? Okay. Well, I'm just wondering what's going on, because, you know, I don't, I don't see why you know, I've been kicked out of the box. A lot of people don't like it. Well, well I promise you, if you were up here and you were running it and you were having to deal with some of the shenanigans that happened up here. Well, I was the shenanigans. You know, I got that. You know, it's, you got to have fun sometimes. Oh, so you think it's okay to inappropriately touch staff? No, no, I don't know. Okay. Right, so maybe you should have the facts before you say that. Yeah. So let's move on. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. I got one other question. <laughs> well, Chris, quick like Vince Walter, 608 Cedric Court. And then again, I apologize. I came in a little bit late, but I had a Zoom meeting myself. I bring in the medical industry, and I bring in a lot of friends and different associates in the medical industry. And two, three weeks ago on a state night, I brought in a couple of representatives of some company and we couldn't get steak. It took an hour. 
Um, we couldn't go downstairs, and, and I'm trying to show them, hey, we've got a great community here, we've got a great thing. Can we get some kind of stability so we know I'm um, downstairs, upstairs? I agree with the thought the young lady said right in front of me. I probably spend a thousand bucks a month, and I, I would just like to be able to know hey, if I bring some guests in from out of town, it's going to be a good scene. Not, oh, sorry, sorry, you can't have that stay. So that's all I got to say is just trying to we'll be downstairs, upstairs, or have upstairs strictly for uh, events and stuff, and just keep the locals downstairs and put a ping pong table or shuffle board up there. So we're having a few beverages, we can do that. I think you did it too. And if collectively you got a couple small groups together, you probably find that we all have the same agenda of saying, hey, what's in it for the folks that pay the bill every month? Otherwise, you guys are doing a great job. I want to say something. That's what I was wondering. The, the, the time frame you mentioned, we had, we had a really rough bill a couple weeks ago. There's no denying that. That's part of the service recovery we have to do. Um, and we're going to make a mistake here, not a person who runs the ship either. We're trying to get through this and get our staff up so we can activate all the rooms when there's no banquets, and even when there is a banquet still. So the goal is to have facility have a space for, for the diners every day if if we close the space either because an event's booked there or we can't facilitate we can't operate at the right level of service we don't simply have a thought our goal is to take that as soon as possible that is what i was referring to a couple weeks ago when our gm transition started and we were immediately down people the the industry right now is going through a significant struggle to get Servers and back of the house put the staff back to work. It's just a, an epidemic we're all facing. Sure. To to do. When our new GM comes in, one of the first things he and I will focus on is how do we open up more of the outlets more often. And last this past Thursday, we had an extra bartender, so we opened the lounge on a Thursday. Our goal will be to get the lounge open earlier in the week as soon as we get to those bathroom levels, especially for the summer and start school season. Thank you. It'll just take us some time to get there. Yeah, and, and also, just to add, Vince, on that night, unfortunately, we had an epic equipment failure in the kitchen, and uh, which is not Kemper's fault. And, and we just had a malfunction of a major piece of equipment that, by code, limits what equipment you can use in the kitchen. That was on so, Wednesday. You were going to have that was here. I get it. Thank you very much. You know, uh, you know I, I know with the whole COVID thing, it's off the push the rock up the hill. So I understand it. Yep. So I'm, I'm here every day. So it, even through the GM coming. So feel free to pull me aside and flow. I'm happy to have a conversation about what's going on. We're not, we're not here to, to, to do anything other than make it back to make it better. That was the bartender was excellent. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. My wife and I used to come here three or four times. We don't come in. Can you change your name, please? Your name and address. Oh, my name is Dennis Curtin, 5715 Ranger Drive. We used to come here three or four times a week. We don't come in. Because, we, number one, we don't know when we're welcome because there might be an event. There might be a, another. We just don't come here. And I'm one of them. But we don't. It's different. It's different. They're not welcoming anyone. Okay. <laughs> Again, I encourage you if, if we close a room for an event that's normally open to the public, which is dining room in the lounge, it'll be posted on the calendar. <laughs> we don't like those. Well, you know, events are good things. I mean, they call extra revenue. So, you know, we, we have to make something somehow, for some way. Yeah, for us to take an event, figure it out. For us to take an event that the clothes allow means the, the revenue that the rental fee that goes into that space, the person that booked that group or booked that event is well above what we would make in that remote day. But that's How not the money. Uh, yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Put them somewhere else. That is a blender room. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Val. Oh, yeah. Hold up one second. All right. So now we're officially going to move into the owner visitor forum. <laughs>
Russ Martin, 5601 Ranger. Uh, we've already seen some frustrated people, uh, mainly having to do with the efficiency or non efficiency, their view of Kemper. And I agree with them. I've reached what used to be called back during the Cold War days a chrome stock moment. That means a point at which you lose uh, confidence and faith in an organization, specifically Kemper, that you had hopes would be a solution. Uh, we all know a lot of the problems they're facing, but when they had all those months to prepare and they're paid a arguably over 9,000 a month to foresee upcoming problems and try to head those off, uh, the main thing they're focused on is staffing problems. Well, there's plenty of restaurants in Rockwall that don't seem to be understaffed. They're getting beers from somewhere. Why can't we, why can't an organization like Kimber, who are supposed to be the professionals, I understand why the board hired them, but you're gonna have a, a chrome stock moment with them where you lost confidence with them and tell them you're not doing uh, to the degree that, that you, that the contract says you're supposed to do. And we are considering our residents want some kind of change in organization or something like that. Uh, you know, Val says all the right things. Well, we don't have enough staff. We have this problem, that problem. But everybody has those problems. And, and like uh, the other night that I mentioned and Chip was correct, something broke down in the kitchen and it was an epic failure. They had a, an event going on in the main ballroom. Good, we're making some money on that thing. They had a, something going on downstairs also. And then they had the problem with the, the uh, piece of equipment in the kitchen, you know, it's whatever it was. And that all combined it had a catastrophe. The main thing was the staff. I'm almost done. The staff thing, we have events. I am all for the events. That's what it means. All the kind of concepts were back when we bought this place that we're not going to make any money up here in this thing. I just love to get close to barely even in the red in the, in the grill. But having said that, we can make, as you all know, uh, pretty good money renting out those venues, the main ballrooms, the downstairs ones. But the staff to do that, in the foreseeable future, we all see the news where people aren't going back to work because they got it's, it's so much unemployment money coming in, you're not going to can't find it. Well, knowing that, why don't we do this? Scott still brought this up to me way back in the beginning that the main ballroom, if you have an event, uh, Chip, your daughter's wedding is going to be in there, it's going to be whatever six thousand dollars to rent the room on Saturday night. You got to cater in the food, and here's a list of people we recommend, but that's on you. We get the alcohol, the HOA or the temper or whatever we're trying to plug. But we have a dedicated that would give us a dedicated staff in the kitchen that takes care of the grill area. We always know they're going to be there. Because I just don't see Kimber doing a very good job of staffing up for these events. That's the main problem. And I, I think I, I hear what you're saying, Russ. You have some great points. Of, uh, could I respond or? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so on uh, last Monday on Indeed, okay, which is an online um, job posting, okay, they're for the city of Rockwall, it, restaurants in the city of Rockwall, 100, uh, 100 restaurants in the city of Rockwall at job postings last Monday on Indeed, okay, 100. Not 100 positions, 100 postings for multiple positions. This is an industry wide problem. Okay, and we had adequate staff here. We lost staff. These are people, this is the culture of people that don't show up to work, call in and say, I'm not going to be here today, but they'll come to work tomorrow. We lost uh, key people in the kitchen. Uh, they, you know, I was in here the other day, they had 10 interviews. Set up, committed. Two, two of the ten people showed up for interviews. To your point, okay, it's not for lack of trying. It's not for lack of uh, uh, trying to forecast this. This is an industry-wide problem. There are uh, 
you want to read it, I'll send you a link to about 10 different articles from reputable sources of challenges with the food industry and in particular of staff. So, yes. Yes. And so what and so with the, with this, what's going on is they say they'll come to the interview. So when you go uh, TWC, you can say, oh, yeah, I applied for that job, but they don't show up for the interview. And that's one of the things that's going on. I, and trust me, Russ, Kemper is painfully aware uh, of where we stand in terms of what our expectations are from them. So we've had discussions with them uh, about that. I'm not going to get into the nuances, but uh, we've certainly uh, reviewed the contract and we've had discussions about our expectations of what the contractual requirements are. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. There's no one else. We'll move into the reporting section. Um, so, from a president's report standpoint, um, I can say that the board is doing everything we can. Here's here's a just as a reminder. Here's the the greater perspective of what we have going on. This needed a renovation desperately. Got done. We're trying to let Kemper do it. Opened up in, in a pandemic. It's not easy. November, just a few weeks after we opened, was the lowest um, industry count for service employees. It has not been an easy thing. To, to I was going to tag on one other thing to, to your statement, Russ, of other restaurants in Rockwell not experiencing the same thing. You're exactly right. They weren't closed for a year, losing all staff there. They weren't in a startup mode in the middle of the pandemic and weren't dealing with, they, they were able to keep their, their staff and their employees. So there's some consistency there for their operations. Also, if we're being honest, most restaurants in Rockwell did not follow guidelines. The not was packed, crazy. All of these restaurants were doing what they could to survive and they even fudged on the rules a little bit. We didn't because Kemper runs it, and they also understand the liability aspect of what that could be for, for all of us. So that said, it's not an apples to apples comparison at all. It's where we're at, we're on a good course with it. And in any startup, it's challenging. The, the budget was brought up earlier, how can you be 3% over, et cetera? Well, you can if you're budgeting and knowing with the uncertainties of the pandemic, as well as a startup operation, you, you, you're going to budget losses in a startup. That's pretty much all businesses. It's business one on one. You're going to lose money at the very beginning. The events are building and building, but they will be hurt by us when we have a hissy fit over something and we go out and we blast ourselves on social media. And that's what it continues to be used for. I don't get it. We got to be helpful. It's not that we're going to hide from problems, but we have to. We have to not purposely go out and hurt ourselves even. And that's what we do when certain residents go out and throw us all under the bus at this, this event in very, very challenging times, historically abnormal times. That said, this is only one part of what we're dealing with. This board is trying to set it up so that in the future, it's not dependent upon the board. No board member should get in the call if a steak was cooked, undercooked, overcooked, or whatever. We're thinking about long-term success for this operation. It's not sustainable. You don't, you're not guaranteed that you're gonna have board members in the future to know anything about restaurants. That's the beauty of a professional company running. And so we're trying to allow them to do their job in very, very challenging and difficult times. That said, then we have a community that hasn't been well-maintained for decades, has so many needs, and was underfunded. And so what we've been trying to do with many of the do sides of things and what we're doing here, get this off our plates so it's better for all of us, 
is we're trying to position ourselves for 20, 30 years out to be in a better position. It is, numbers can be manipulated and you can say, oh, it's financially feasible for us to, to keep dues low. But you can't do that when you have multi-year runs of that in our history where we didn't raise it even for inflation. We need to pour back into our community. We're not gonna do that on a shoestring budget. The, the, the reserves were dwindled um, you, you know, three or four years ago. Shouldn't have happened. We're moving to, tr to fix that, but we're also fixing problems at the same time. Fixing problems costs money and building the reserves costs money. So the, poor, the, the perspective of, of this board is fix long-term problems, get us to where we have the income for the neighborhood overall to support all of our amenities and to be prepared to, to do repairs and that sort of stuff on roads and whatnot. We have such a great thing here. And I think just maybe because of the last 14 months and everyone's a little bit on edge, we're, we're focusing on all the wrong things. There's so much to be grateful for. We started last month out talking about that. What are the things that make this place unique? Why on earth do we keep coming back to this point where we are just furious and wanting to fight each other when we live in one of the best neighborhoods in the Rockwell area, and I would say even the DFW area. So there's no other place you can get all of this. And there's and the price that we get it at is way under, way under. Average is 250 to 400 a month for any other neighborhood in our entire MLS, which is huge, that has any sort of these amenities. So I can't force you to be grateful. I'm just a grateful person by nature, but that's what I'm focusing on. What do we get to do? Hop on golf carts, wave at neighbors, that sort of thing. It's a really, really good place. So all, all in there, I just would like to see more, more gratitude and more kindness to each other as we're coming out of very challenging times in our country and, and for our Okay. As you might expect from the treasurer, I'm going to throw a bunch of numbers at you. And let's say we'll have this posted in a week or so on the website. And if you'd like a copy of anything that I say here, you're welcome to email me and I'll send you one. So, what I'd like to share with you today uh, fits under the heading of check is in the mail or whatever the electronic equivalent is of that just now. And there's also a touch of infomercial as in, wait, there's more. So let's, let's, talk, let's talk the Yacht Club first. So the Yacht Club on the books for the first quarter lost $132,000. Despite COVID shutdowns and interruptions of uh, operations, capacity limitations, as Val pointed out, the Yacht Club beat their revenue budgeted estimate by 3% in March. It was actually 2.3% for the whole quarter. Uh, <clears throat> the loss in March, as you mentioned, was $32,000, $18,000 less than the uh, average in January and February. And these numbers do include a capital fee, which is $9,270 a month. Went up 3% from last year. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we received $90,730 on January 26th in PPP funds. PPP stands, as many of you know, payroll protection program. Should this loan be forgiven, and we expect it to be forgiven shortly, our loss for the three months would drop to about 42,000, or less than $14,000 a month. We have more than this in our 2021 budget to cover the operations here, more than $14,000 a month of loss. Coincidentally, the loss for CLCA, which incorporates the Yacht Club financials, was also 
coincidentally, 132,000 for the quarter. But wait, there's more. CLCA paid $217,000 of renovation and reconstruction invoices in the first quarter. Lent it, if you will. Now, if we had our B1 bank loan totally approved, that money would have come out of the bank loan. The bank loan in the last week has been totally approved. The 217,000 will go back into the operating reserves, operations and reserves, and it will result in a year to date gain rather than a loss. So the bottom line, it's been a struggle. We heard that. We're struggling, we're struggling. But our vision for the Yacht Club is still intact. Our financial, when our financial pieces fall into place, the checks in the mail electronically or otherwise, the good news that's coming on the PPP forgiveness, we'll be better off financially than we have been for some time. So the future looks brighter than it's been, more manageable and more balanced between the Act Club and the greater community. Thank you. All right, Thank you, Bruce. All right, Keith. So I wasn't able to pull together all the numbers that I typically do. Yesterday, we had no internet. Carrie Cunningham will be in the office today. So no internet, no phone. Um, did a lot of work uh, around there. So we had some spectrum issues. And I know down here, and maybe if you have spectrum, you've experienced the same issues. So. Um, the items I did want to, I know uh, we've had some issues with Republic as far as the bulk trash pickup. And I did speak with the supervisor, Chris, yesterday. And I know Bruce has been in contact with the principal with uh, Republic also. They're shooting, as they say, shooting for Monday to get back in the community and continue the pickup of trash. And uh, they are down to two trucks. So they're hoping to be back on track within two weeks. So that's an uh, update there. Um, once I'm moving to a shredding service at the office, so I'm hoping that in May to have that shredding truck out here to offer it to both the community. Worked in the office on um, last week, going to go to Northgate tomorrow. Once I get everything that we can shred, then I will call for um, the truck to come in the community and uh, at the board's urgence to do that at least twice a year. So just watch Town Square for that. Uh, final audit reports and returns are starting to come in. I do have um, the draft audit for TYC and the return and expect CLCA within the next two to four weeks. So that should be complete again in May. Financials again will be posted either Monday or Tuesday, depending on the internet, which we hope to have resolved today. Um, awaiting direction from B1 and from the government as far as the TYC PPP loan forgiveness application that Bruce was mentioning. We expect that to be forgiven at 100%. It was used all for payroll. So uh, that would, um, that journal entry would occur in April. Uh, as of Friday, no update yet. Um, you know, assessments are due on the 20th. I always pick up the mail the next morning, anything that's dropped in the evening. If you have an issue or forget, just let me know. I'm happy to go in and make an adjustment. Sometimes we have a lot on our plates. Uh, the office has been in a little bit of disarray. If you've been in, we did have a little water damage with the, the straight line winds that we had several weeks ago. Um, so there's some water stain. We're hoping that the carpet, it will be clean on the 28th. They'll be coming in at 2.30. It's possible we may have to close entrance to the office that afternoon. So watch the marquee in town square. And then uh, I guess we're already fast approaching May 1st and May Day. And a big shout out to Jane Shoneman and the Art of the Month group. They've really worked hard. She completed the monument yesterday. So I want to do something for her, for them for May Day, maybe a little May basket or something. So just enjoy the rest of April. Stay warm today. It's going to warm up and uh, we are in contact with Magnolia also. I have a pond on my property and it looks terrible. It hasn't looked this bad in the spring for a long, long time. And I'm gonna request next week or actually ask Terry to get with them to provide some sort of an update to explain to the community. I took a summer algae report home last night and it, 
it doesn't really reflect on, on what we're going through now. We've had an unusually cold end of winter and spring, and that has affected the turn in the pond. So um, just to let you know, we're, we're on top of that. I know everybody's looking at kid fish coming on and uh, we don't want the ponds, you know. So we'll try to get something out on that. And basically that's all I have. Thank you, T. Chip, over to you for security. Just a uh, quick security update. Joe Parker, our new security supervisor, is getting uh, uh, well indoctrinated. Um, we continue to have uh, some issues with speeding. Uh, our, our gate counts are off the chart. So the visitor's gate uh, in, uh, for the last month, there were over 15,000 cars that came through on the visitor side of the gate. Uh, for the uh, yard sale, uh, we had uh, about a thousand cars come through that day. About 300 of those were outside for the garage sale. I know for those of us that were able to uh, move our stuff to someone else's house, that's not a bad thing. Um, so we'll be, uh, again, we still, you know, probably is not people in here, but we continue to have residents that don't have resident stickers. The lines are long. Uh, we're back enforcing parking again. So there's no more, uh, unless uh, you've made arrangements with the office uh, in terms of having a, a pot or something in your driveway because you're still doing uh, storm construction. We're enforcing all the uh, parking regulations again with a few exceptions. And uh, again, we encourage uh, residents to get a sticker and to get a toll tag. Um, it just speeds the process up. It would really help us out uh, just from uh, the number of people coming through the gate. So we break down, uh, I don't have them uh, with us, but I've asked them to start breaking down into different categories. So I'll have, be able to uh, provide information on how many for example, how many folks are coming in outside to, to use this facility, that type of thing. Uh, there are continue to be reckless golf cart drivers, uh, not anyone in specifically in this room, but some of your grandkids are not doing such a great job of driving the golf carts. Uh, that continues to be a, a problem. And uh, we'll be clamping down on that. We do have a uh, from the city of Rockwall, uh, some updates on golf cart policy. There may be some changes coming in that because it is a regulated uh, thing within the city of Rockwall. Uh, we fall into some parts of the regulation and not in other parts. Um, so that's all I have on that. Do you want me just to move on? Here? Well, yeah, can you, before you do that, can you, can you tack on just a little uh, FY on the, the dumpster? Uh, yeah, at so remind down at Cutter Hill, again, this might not be the right audience, but uh, I know it gets out uh, on the video. So down at Cutter Hill, uh, Republic Waste can't get their trucks through there. It's pretty tight quarters, as you know. There are, um, there's a spot down there for bulk track trash for Cutter Hill residents only. It's, uh, it's marked. We have residents in the neighborhood that are taking their bulk trash. I have another word for it, but this is a family friendly meeting uh, and dumping it down there. It's not to be used. It's for Carter Hill residents only. If we, if it's not if, but when we catch you doing that, the fines will start at 250 and go up from there. So it's a, it's a mess. And then it's also exasperated by the fact that Republic Waste is behind um, picking up. So these folks have been able to have to look at the stuff for the last three or four weeks down there. It's unacceptable. So we'll be having more reminders of that uh, out in the neighborhood. So, and got club construction. Yeah, club construction, too big. Uh, we have the uh, handicapped parking is poured, it's still uh, cordoned off. It'll be hopefully striped uh, this coming week. Um, typically wait 28 days at, uh, so, that the so that the chemicals leach out of the concrete before you strike it. <coughs> Ask them to uh, move that up. Uh, of course, this week has been a rainy week, so that hasn't um, worked out well. The anticipation is uh, we'll get that strike next week. We've ordered the signs and the posts put in so we can 
And then we'll be restriping the current handicap spots for golf cart parking only. Um, and uh, the only other major update is the elevator. And um, I'm assured that uh, I will have an answer on a date uh, early next week uh, as to what day Schindler, the state of Texas, and uh, the city of Rockwall can all get here at the same time and do the testing in order to activate the elevator. All the, all the work is done finally, and uh, we're, we're all looking forward to getting that, that up and running. That's all I've all right, so we'll move into new business. Summer pool opening and programs. A couple different, a couple different items here on the summer pool opening. Um, first and foremost, we're trying to move that up. Historically, it's been towards the end of May, uh, Memorial Day, and we're looking towards the beginning of May. Um, we're gonna do everything in accordance with what the regulations are. Uh, but we believe that it's going, it looks like it's going to be able to be more of a normal year when it comes to, to both of the pools. Uh, inspection is coming up, I think, this week with maintenance. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that will be going on. We have to pass that first before C. Rockwell gives us the thumbs up to open. Evan, will we be, will the furniture be put out this year? I'm not yes. sure what you're saying. Yes. Are, but Yes, now, that last year. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a great, great question. So, like I said, more of a return to normal. Um, furniture is already being prepped, clean for all that. Okay. That said, the plan last year before COVID and all that stuff hit was to get new uh, pool furniture. We spent roughly that entire budget, right around $25,000 on monitors for the pool so that we could open it underneath. The, uh, the circumstances that we were in last will we year. Will we have a lifeguard this year or will it still No, historically we have not had, had, a, had a lifeguard for, for certain events. It's possible that we would have those, but not, not on a regular basis. It's on the holidays, it gets so busy yeah. out there and it's hard to watch the kids with this, you know, on the slide. And yeah, any of the, the really big events is, is typical for us to have lifeguards there. Um, Thank you. Yep. Um, hold on one, one, one second. Sorry, we're still in an open session here. Um, there has been a proposal that has been provided for the SWIM program that came from Melissa Corbon. Um, what discussion or questions does anyone have? I, I think it's a great idea. I just don't think the support of the, I don't think it's the money side of it is grossly unfair to um, the homeowners association in comparison to the amount of time that she's um, going to be using the pool. I know she's popular, does a great job with water aerobics, want to have her in here, but I think um, we need to have a discussion about um, the financial split of the money. Are we talking, about, just, are we talking about that open money? Not why well, I think I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move that we table it and then uh, once we get it resolved, just do it by electronic vote. Okay. Okay. Second that. Okay. So we have a motion second. Any discussion or questions on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That was unanimous. Again, I, I want to reiterate, I'm all for it. Full programs are good. Yeah. But as far as yeah, you know, the, the cost or the rental of the facilities for the use, right? Okay. All right. Uh, 2021 community pool rules. Discussion on that. They will need that off. Okay. Um, so the pool rules last year were modified to uh, fit COVID. We're still not out of the woods on that front yet, but we're doing what we can to remove a lot of the more um, strenuous that were appropriate for last year, but not appropriate for this year. Um, so it's going to be suggested uh, that there's social distancing. Um, I don't believe there's going to be any requirement for, for masks. 
Um, all of this is somewhat still in a little bit of flux. Um, I, I think you could you could easily understand that it's going to be a lot of different perspectives on this. But again, what you're hearing to say is that we're trying to return it to, to as much of the normal uh, as as possible. So some of those rules being um, paired back from what they were last year is uh, what's on the agenda there. Um, that? Has everybody been able to review? Yeah, I, I don't have an issue with how it's one here on the bullet points. On, on the this, is, this is really everything that we always well, basically yeah. what we had previous with, with the addition of um, social the social distancing yeah. suggestion um, and, and operating to 9 p.m., which I believe last year. With everything that we were having to monitor, we were at seven. Yeah. So extending yeah. those hours. Okay. So um, it should be no way. It should be nine p.m. or sunset, whichever comes first. I mean, that's going to change as we get further along. And we don't have a lit uh, lit out there, so I think from a safety yeah. standpoint, it needs to close at dark. Yeah. So, that's just me. Okay. Is that something we want to look at changing or do we want to approve it? Just to prove it as yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve as submitted. It, it looks like it, what it says is 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Right. Yeah, maybe we just put that. Yeah, I would you modify the motion to change it? I don't want to modify my motion. Okay. <laughs> I feel like nine o'clock is is I okay. Well, but I'll second that. Still. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And then the 2021 pool use agreement and small pool rental. Sure. Um, as far as chambers. Yeah. And um, from discussion with some residents, in the past, use of the pool and rental were allowed all day long at the small pool. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, they'll get their kids together and they'll get all the way to the small pool and it's closed for a party. And I know growing up, I was, there was always open pool hours, and then there was times before and after where you could rent it. And I thought it would make more, more sense for some families, and also people who really want to have a, they love the small pool, they like the quietness of it, and have a, you know, a dedicated time that will always be open from, I think they said, one o'clock until four every day. That way, we still have those rental hours before and after, but just limit the rentals during that time. So that was a proposal I had talked to a few other residents that are passionate about the small pool yeah. and we made the changes to where you can rent from um, 10 to 1 or 4 to 7 um, and the rest of the time and of course they won't always be rented so you can always still go in the morning as you always have but then at least you know you'll have that dedicated time from 10 to 1 I'm sorry one, one to one four provides that consistency yeah, yeah. So. okay the, the goal here is to make sure that there's some time every day that the pool is always available for all residents. Yeah. Yep. What time and does the small pool close? It would be nine or nine. Nine. Yeah. So the pool rules here apply to the. So they could have an evening swim for seven to nine. Sure. And again, it's not. I mean, no. the number of the rentals training. that we typically have is right. half, a half, a half, half a dozen for the entire yeah. season. But because of COVID, a lot more people may have they may. So I just wanted to, yes, and absolutely. will those be posted? Like, yeah. I think they should be posted on the marquee at least and on Town Square. Well, Town well, Square, if it was there, at least you could go and look. Yeah, and pull close, 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 Plus so, the uh, security deposit for any damage. Three hundred dollars. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve this. I think Lee's done a great job getting this lined out, so I'll approve it. Or I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second. I'll 
we also just changed the number of persons that are allowed in the pool area. Previously, it said 40, but only like 20 or 22 were allowed in the pool, but it's very hard to regulate that. So at all times, no more than 22. So whoever in the Yeah, if you can be in, if you're in the pool area, you can be in the pool. That was Chip's suggestion. I'm also a but so we still have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Now uh, we'll close out the poll discussions and move us into golf carts. Chip? <laughs> or anyone else that wants to leave? Uh, I thought we were actually going to table till May. There's some proposed changes to the golf cart rules. Um, we did receive a communication from the Rockwall Police Department on there are regulations on golf carts. Some of the regulations um, could pertain to us, even though we have private streets. Uh, and um, we, I uh, think Carrie and Bruce have done some preliminary work on it with my um, PTO. Uh, that stands for I pay to take some time off. Um, we, I just asked that we move it to May. So the three or four of us um, probably want to get Kristen involved in that and, and Joe Parker from security. Uh, we, we just have ongoing issues with underage drivers um, and the streets are private. We have liability. Uh, we have parents that don't care and uh, we need to tighten up a few areas I think just in general on the on golf carts. So okay, so tabling for May. I would just take I I would make a motion on the table at some May. One second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There's another December sailing camp. Um so a lot of this depends on Roy Kuypers, and um, last year he was not um, able to, to facilitate it. This year um, he has two uh, 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 certified lifeguard <coughs> CPR uh, uh, young men that are that are willing to take on the program and be able to provide it. That will come with uh, some insurance uh, coverage needs. Um, and some operation with the yacht club from a lunch standpoint uh, side of things. So the goal is to uh, move towards being able to have it, sorting out all those different uh, details. I believe it would start in June and run through the end of July, maybe the beginning of August. So um, we get with, with Roy on those fine details, but I, I can tell you, Having grown up in the neighborhood and learning how to sell out here in those summer programs, uh, my own children uh, partaking in them as well, I see it as just one more element of what we have to offer that's different from other neighborhoods. And I think we should uh, push to, towards doing that as long as it's feasible. So I would make is it something we need to take action on? I would say just that, that we intend to, to pr proceed with that, assuming that all. Oh. I'll, I'll make a motion that we proceed with uh, engaging Roy Kuypers uh, et al. for the summer sailing program, provided that he provides um, appropriate insurance and other guarantees uh, as necessary um, <coughs> to hold us on the screen. Injuries or accidents and other groups personnel. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second that. Jose, <laughs> okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay, that moves us into owner visitor form two. Please state your name and address. Should you wish to go on? Russ Martin, 5601 Ranger. In regards to the pool, the, I strongly suggest you guys find it in the budget or, or have an increased presence of security checking. 
this summer. It worked out great last year to have a constant uh, gate monitor. If you don't have this that this year, you're going to have a lot of outsiders coming in and there's conflicts that occur. And uh, I really think you should look at having either a strong presence of security checking at least once an hour, uh, people's tags or whatever identification method you're going to have, or reinstate the uh, gate monitor. Uh, anyway, uh, follow up on the uh, Kimber. I found it disheartening to hear the Kimber got a raise. I just, sorry. It's contractually how, how it's set up. Yeah. It's not. It's not that it was approved or anything. But the numbers. That, I'm sure that it was it just. It was just a little vexing and disheartening because, I, as I alluded to earlier, a lot of us are not real happy. With it. But don't leave that alone on that. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little quick statement. Who are you? Oh, Glenda Honeycutt, fifty one zero two Yacht Club. Um, we say that. Well, I'm very grateful. I love this place. I want it to look beautiful. I, I don't like to be told that I'm not grateful. I'm very grateful for what I have and to live here. I really am. And I think a lot of people know that, that we're, we have a beautiful place to live. But what concerns me is if we keep uh, maybe, uh, we just got a loan. And yes, we got a PPP from the federal government. But uh, if we keep getting loans, how are we gonna fix our streets, our ponds need some repair? That's what I'm concerned about. The things that really look good. I like the yacht club. I have my ladies lunch and dinner hanging this year, but we need a meeting place. I'm just wanting you to know that there are people that love this place and we're very grateful. No, I'm, I'm That's just all I making to say. a reminder that we all do need to be grateful because not everyone is grateful. Well, okay, I haven't seen anything on next door in a long time. We someone next said next door is not a not not an official channel for, for me. No, no, but it, you you just brought this up on um, friends or that's supposed to be for us. What? On um, friends what? of Facebook, I guess. Mm -hmm. But that's Julie's a profit. Oh, Julie's group. That's right. not. That's that's not but I'm just saying, I don't care. I don't care about that. I'm just it's saying. Not it's not private. I don't it's know. Private. It's not private. When, it, when people go out there and make mis misstatements, and you know what I'm talking about, if you go out there and make misstatements about um, uh, financial facts, it doesn't. It doesn't show gratefulness to any of us. Number one and number two, it doesn't help the brand any uh, when you when people go out and just don't state they just make stuff up. So well, I I have never um, run Chandler Sand. So, I love this place. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that's you know, your opinion. So, it's my opinion. Yeah. Opinion. Of what? So I'm just saying is when you post things out on Facebook and other social media places and. Uh, don't state the true facts and don't fact check what you put out there. It doesn't help any of us. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. So mm, I think they're checked, but it's okay. Uh, I think Laurie, you had your own. Oh, 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 so, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I just want to add that. We'll come I'm to that. I'm that. grateful for what y'all doing. And I love this. I've been here 24 years. Only thing I wanted to ask can we bring friends? I have four. Yes. Or old ladies who would like to come with <laughs> to the pool. pool. Is that okay? Yeah. The the rules that have been in place for a couple it's two guests that you that you're able to. to but it's it's four. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it says two. Bring my family. It says two. Did you know that it's not a guest? It's always a guest. I can bring. It's been that way for a long time. I mean, we can look Honestly, at it. Honestly, family's not a guest, but if you maybe all the like, bring it up. Uh, uh, well, he said that you can get a variance for the day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Pat, so we'll work it out with you because your 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 uh, friends are great okay. ladies. We'll and work it out with you. Who, it's ladies who supports us. Right. We'll we'll work it out with you, Pat. Your, your friends are great you ladies. Get, you can get variances. You can get variances by calling the office, but the rule is two. But you can get a variance. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Pat. Evan, I just wondered about the snack bar during the summer months. Are we going to have access to that this year? I don't know if you do it. 
um, there's been there's been some yeah there's been some conversations about that. The, the the main thing keeps coming back to we can't do everything all at once given the current climate. So they're ramp they're ramping back up. If it's possible, it's going to be something that's done. Um, so just, but we, what we don't want to do is try and open that up and then create a a chain reaction of bad service through sure. other outlets in the building. Okay. In progress. Thank yeah. Thank you. Oh, I see him. Sandy, please. I have in. two questions. Uh, first, I would like to know exactly how much money we have borrowed <coughs> in the past couple of years. A total? $4.8 million. Okay. How much? $4.8 million. Which is which was to to refi the original one and a half ish uh, million, and then to do the renovations here, and then to um, build up, start building reserves back up, and take on some of the most uh, important projects that are currently on our plate, similar to what you mentioned with the ponds. That first phase, that what the engineer uh, said that he really suggested doing. Couple of road issues as well, so and that's all. Signs. It goes to all of that, and for the new road signs as well. Okay. My second question was, uh, when are we ever going to get a new road coming down to the club? Yeah, as soon as we have the money to do that. This is part of the reason that we've been identifying in the in our budget that we were not prepared to handle the level of deferred maintenance that we had. And that is also why I pushed for this last summer to do a reserve study that it points 30 years out so that we have really good metrics for the next coming decades of where we need to be, where that, where that points us to is we are not taking in enough from a due standpoint to be able to properly handle the critical nature of a lot of the deferred maintenance that hasn't that has been deferred over the last two decades so the answer to your question is as soon as possible and then we'll patch until then but unless you want us to borrow more money which we don't want to do and unless you want to have a special assessment which we don't want to do i was bitching about that when i was on the board chip and all we did was patch chip <laughs> not chip but uh, chuck just patches. Sandy, Chip did um, research on it. Was what about eight hundred thousand oh, dollars to do that lot? Oh, no, no. The construction prices are at absurd. Well, right now, yeah, yeah. it may have gone yeah. up. That was, that was, that was before. That was before COVID. Yeah, yeah. especially when they get the uh, marina down here. They should have cut us a deal to come down here and done that. Oh. So I asked the marina. I mean, it's expensive. It's over five dollars a square foot. Yeah, it's very, it's very expensive. expensive. So it, we know it needs to be done, but we can't just make the money magically appear because of of how we're handcuffed. We can't raise the dues to the amount that they need to be for us to be able to do these changes and the modifications that are needed. And so it's it's the the maximum amount that you're allowed to do until we can get to. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Anybody right. else? Okay, right here. Uh, we're going to do three points at Columbia and five and four yacht club. Okay. Uh, I'm back to the loan. I was just wondering what kind of interest rates we have on it and what kind of loan is it? Is it a, does it roll over? Or does it come yeah, in? I'll, I'll speak to that. So it's um, the previous loan was a five year loan. Um, this one is a 10 year loan amortized on 20, 4.3% interest rate. And it was interest only for the first 18 months because we were factoring for what we were going to be in as far as startup mode with, with this operation. So it kind of got us a little bit, a little bit more there. And so the plan, in case you're wondering, the, the big plan there is as we move Dues to where they that the needs necessitate them to be, we have the ability to pay that loan off in full by the time that, that it's due, possibly before there is prepayment penalty, which is normal on most loans. I think it runs a little fourth year. Um, but we have the ability to build up the reserves, take care of problems in the neighborhood, uh, and 
also to pay off that loan uh, within that timeline. So it's very much calculated for that. What's our goal for the reserves? Um, the goal for the reserves is loosely somewhere between 800 to 1.2 initially. Uh, and then um, there's a provision in the loan that, that states if, if we have anything in reserves over 1.2, that that can be grafted directly off to principal for the loan. So for, for the period of time that we have that from years four, uh, or rather, yeah, four to, to 10, um, we're going to want to basically pour back into the neighborhood for anything that's over that. So we get to that number, and then once the loan is paid off and that stipulation no longer exists, then we would push that up. I personally would like to see it at two and a half because that's going to give us the ability to, these sessions would change significantly. You come in, there, there's, there's some great things with having all of us observing our little corner of the neighborhood board meetings in the future would be coming in and saying, hey, I noticed this, and then it's and then it's the board, whatever the board is at that point going, we have funds to fix that. So the dynamic changes considerably in, in, in the future as we move that direction. Quick, quick question. Um, Linda Honeycutt, 51 Alton Cock Club. Um, okay, so I, I'm just trying to understand this. Bruce, you said just you said the first quarter of this year we lost 132,000. So that's, that's what not, it looks right now. Not yeah. factoring for the PPP. Yeah. So once that's forgiven, it actually can be. It's going to be 42. Uh, I just you're speaking of NYC. It's an accounting entry, so you have to account it as cash. And once you the loan's forgiven, then it 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 becomes a credit back. So it's, today is today the money is. It's a one-sided transaction today. Once the loans pay back or is forgiven, which is almost assured to happen, it's 99.9% guaranteed it's going to be uh, forgiven. But once we get the instructions on how to do that, and they haven't issued them yet, then that goes, that offsetting entry will be made and it will cut that um, that money was all used, had to be used for payroll here, which it was, that's how it was handled. And then that $90,000 will be a credit back to that cash account and the losses will um, come off of that. So then the loss is $30,000, dollars What about say, um, uh, who, do we have a venue we have a event coordinator. Yes. Yes. Okay. Who is that? Danielle. Danielle Wright. Right. Okay. And since she, in the first couple of weeks of her being on board, she she put thirty thousand dollars worth of business, and currently, I believe we're sitting at one fifty. I only um, see the deposits. She's here today. I only see okay. the deposits. Yeah. If you want to meet her. We, we have, She's we always have, around. We have about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of events booked here through uh, out into 2022. There's an immediate 30,000 for this year. Right now, right. It, there's more to come, I'm sure. But right. she has it for a, a, the other 120 is going into like 2022. So there's a lot of, um, they, they get about 10 inquiries a day here, as you can imagine, it's gorgeous. Okay. She's done a good job. Get you to it. We'll come to you. All right, go ahead, Rick. Me? Yes, sir. Rick Morrison, 436 Columbia Drive. Uh, off of the money we're talked about over the last quarter, how much of that money, if any, has gone into the reserve account? None. Okay. That's my question. We were, we were budgeting, just so you know, we were budgeting for 2021 that in May, all of the reserve. Entries start happening, which is I'm going to have 135,000 for the year. May, May and through then, December. And then plus, at, plus we two. could have, in lieu of any emergencies, plus then you have the 217 going back that's in. going into reserves. We it should in April. It may have hit yesterday. We should, we should end we up. We started the, that. Um, yeah, we should end up the year somewhere around 300,000. Mm -hmm. So again, sure. this is. 
we've gone kind of like this and then COVID bless all the, the changes yeah, we're right. doing and then we're like kind of so is that the projection for the balance of the loan I guess the next next eight nine years maybe three hundred thousand a year in the reserve or I mean I'm just saying well, I, I heard the 1.2 yeah. million yeah but. well that's the goal because that's, there's a threshold there that if we go over that 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 can get applied directly to principal right um uh, Long term goal, like I said, is two and a half. I think two and a half, two, two fifty a year. In no, the no, two and a half million. We oh, want to build the reserves to two and a half million. I was, that, I was looking at it on an annualized basis. What yeah. would be the in normal this conditions? Year, Three hundred thousand. And then next and then, year, we would probably be adding an, an additional one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand. And it, it's a nonprofit, so anything that's extra that we don't use, then it goes directly <laughs> into that to that reserve account. That's the plan. But we also know that we have a lot of things that we need to tackle. This retaining wall out here between the upper and middle <coughs> two scores needs to be done. We have a we have a number on the table for that. It's a in my opinion a very dangerous thing, not not to mention unsightly. And that's one one of the more visible areas. But we have lots of wood wood tie retaining walls around. And I don't know if you've all seen this. I'm trying to pay attention to this. It seems like when I go through the tennis court area, the wood tire retaining walls are growing legs that, that are directly around the, the perimeters of the floors. They're growing legs and they're they're like raising up and they're falling down on the ground. That's not happening without uh, aid or help. So I don't know if we have some teenagers or some tennis people. I don't know what's going on there, but um, it's making it look more unsightly, but all of those are areas that need to be touched as well. If I'm being as conservative as I can in my number, right in this little area with the tennis courts and all the wood tie retaining walls and the concrete that desperately needs to be redone on that path from the parking lot all the way down to the water, because it's bad. Um, can we probably have seven hundred thousand dollars worth of work that needs to be done in that whole area, including the drainage, repouring concrete, and and retaining walls? Can't so will that be budgeted before the reserve? I mean, so so what we're doing every year with the thirty-year reserve study uh, that that we've been working on, what we're doing is being able to itemize the most important things, which is typically either safety or or cosmetically looks bad. We're trying to identify all those <coughs> and start a, a plan of attack. So those spins are also budgeted as far as what we would be spending out of reserves. So, so like the retaining walls, we have all we've had all those evaluated. We have those rated A, B, C, and D. Then the next, um, you know, so the, the the A's are need to be fixed right away or are top on the list. The other thing we have to do is figure out who actually owns all those walls. Okay, because some back up to uh, Cutter Hill, Match Point, places like that. And so, um, you know, there's some investigation that needs to go on here um, to determine um, because there's, there's a law in Texas called the law of lateral support. So if you touch someone else's wall and you don't own it, you just bought it. And we don't want to get into that. And so, um we you know we've got a team of uh folks working on, on that we're uh Ellen in particular on that we've been working on getting budgetary numbers together so we can start attacking these things uh we have the numbers for the streets we're just waiting for the rain to stop here we can start some of those repairs i know uh jim keeps asking about the uh, as do many people over at australia and yacht club there's something we had the city in uh we asked them to um run a camera through the, the sanitary sewer line over there to that all the making of a break but there isn't one there's something washing out that road because we replaced it um before camera left that those whole panels were replaced and they dropped the city believes there's something else going on there so i'm very i know it's frustrated frustrating for all of us but i want to go spend sixteen thousand dollars on concrete and not fix the problem so we've got to take a look at that so but we may not be able to find that out till we take the panels out and see what's going on underneath there as an example yeah we have the 
engineering report from the engineers on the spillway from Sovereign Pond. Uh, we're working through that. That's a, that, that's a, a most likely a critical path item that needs to take place there. So there's just, they're all, you know, we're working through prioritizing on being diligent. You know, Bruce has done a great job of keeping us in check on, on writing the checks. And so we just need to be careful there on that. James, I think you had your hand yes. up next. Yes, so uh, James Wagner, 327 Harbor View Drive. What is the uh, contractual term agreement for <coughs> Kemper? It's a five year contract. <coughs> Are there any provisions for outage? Yes. Yes. Debbie Morrison, 436 Columbia Drive. So we can't release Kemper early because nobody's happy with them. Who's going to run it? Manager. Just, um, just a manager? <laughs> Club manager used to run. Not we well. Have have but it could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Kemper could be too. So I mean. Okay. So Kemper will work here from January to October without anything but a phone call. Couple of times a month. I'm sorry, you have a gross misunderstanding of what happened in January to October with Kemper's involvement. What planning, architecture, or what? Yeah, I mean, were, like, I'm talking about 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They were here on, on site. Yeah. I just need some education on that. Then we're happy to do that. Yeah. But two, we we paid them a lot of money, and we're having to go and get a loan to get things done. To renovate a building that we own, they don't they don't own the building. And they, that building that hadn't been basically touched, I know, had been treated poorly for thirty five years. Okay, so. Evan, in the renovation, did we get new kitchen equipment or is it the same kitchen? No, it's a blend. It's a blend. So okay. we we spent um, we spent I, I don't mind talking about we spent about a hundred thousand dollars on uh, new kitchen equipment. Um, their VP of uh, food basically came in, evaluated it. Um, we had some other uh, for example, the city of Rockwall, uh, which again, there's always surprises in a 45 year old building. Uh, the city of Rockwall required us to um, tear the ceiling out in the kitchen and uh, replace a number of items above the ceiling. Uh, we had, um, you know, we have a benefit hood that today, if you were to replace it, it's about um, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. We rehab that with new motors. We we continued it. You know, this was the night of the epic failure. I sorry, Russ, I had the wrong day uh, on a Wednesday night. The uh, the belts, the, the fan belts, if you call them, we had an issue with those, and so that didn't work. So there's. Um, we still have um, the walk-in cooler and freezer. We've had to, re you know, we had to rehab that. Um, we've got some, you know, there's just surprises that come up in there. Um, we've spent um, a, a lot of extra time. 95% uh, of the plumbing has been replaced in here. Unfortunately, some of the plumbing we didn't even know what was here because it's in the wall, for example, in the kitchen. Uh, people just, you know, contractors came in here and put a screw in the wall and put a hole in a vent stack, which was contributing to some of the odor. You have to tear the wall out. We have to put the wall back together. I'm just giving you examples of, of things. You know, we put, um, uh, you know, we had uh, all these nice train air conditioning units. So, um, but we had uh, six of the 10, or five or six of the 10 or 12 we put in weren't even working. They were, they were wired, they were wired incorrectly. in correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, we had too many of them. We had uh, the HVAC 
uh, mechanical engineers come in and do the load calculations. We over purchase for those. So not taken away from what's been done here before, but um, the, all of the uh, glass in here was single pane, non-tempered glass. I mean, we've spent, we basically for all intents and purposes gutted here with, with a few minor exceptions. There's other things that will come up in the future. We just couldn't do them. Right. And you're starting a business in the middle of the worst pandemic since the 1908 thing. And we're just saying here, it's a startup business. And Kemper is painfully aware of the challenges here, but it, I'm just making a passionate plea to my fellow homeowners here, is it doesn't help uh, when you come in here, and I'm not talking about, I don't think anybody in this room, uh, come in here and you berate the wait staff. It doesn't, you wouldn't do that at Sonata's, you wouldn't do it at the salt grass. It doesn't help when you come in here and say something uh, to the wait staff about their physical makeup. It doesn't help. People, we've lost quality wait staff in here because our client, our, our friends and neighbors come in here and verbally abuse them. And say, why would I work here? Yeah, the tips are great. We're all generous tippers here. Trust me, we all are. Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't help when you make statements to someone um, I pay your salary and, you know, GD, you're going to do this. That's not true. It's not how you treat people. You wouldn't go to Zanatas and talk to the wait staff there that way. I'm just making a passionate plea here. Be kind to the people that work here. It's a tough business and it's really tough now because we're asking we, Kemper, not us, but we're asking Kemper Kemper's asking people to work extra hours. Some of these folks have not had a day off. Uh, they're in here on the days we're closing, doing things to keep make this successful. So please think about what you say to someone before you just blurt out. Um, and we all have different um, physical makeups here. And it doesn't help to say to someone, how, you know, I don't like how you look. It's just not right. You're fat. You're fat. Why would they Why would you work? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm fat. seeing a lot more support. Yeah. Yes. I'm, yes. 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 Yeah. So the problems are still so persistent. Yeah. So, you know, make the new voice. Yeah. Let them know we're yeah. standing by you. Yeah. Somebody yeah. sent me a question to ask. Okay. That's from Ann Welsh on Sester. And she says, can residents get a break on rentals for room venue? Kemper has a special deal for, for residents, residents. And I don't know it off the top of my head. I think it's like a, a 10, 10% reduction or 5 or 10% yeah. reduction that residents are able to get. So, yes, mm -hmm. yes ma'am. Uh, only thing I would add, the bottom of is the way they have shape. <laughs> The one is a good one. She says, I cannot make you a drink because the one upstairs won't loan me the shaker. It's not that much money. And I ask her, why don't they buy it? They don't she, want to buy it. She had a shaker last night. Shaker. She had a shaker last night. We were night. there last night. She had a shaker down there last night. Okay, because they borrow it. No, 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 no. We'll get. We'll make sure, Pat. We'll make sure they have the shaker. I'll, I'll buy it. It's, it's very silly. I'll, I'll that's one thing. It's a. It's a part of the equipment that they need to have. If they don't have it, I don't think they Would it be a good idea to maybe put the name of the manager up there and think anybody's got an issue? Talk to that manager and well, not go through. The, this is so. This is the great point. Thanks, Thank right. you very much because that's where we need to be going with this is that we treat this, even though it's our amenity, but that we treat it like we would any other place. And at any other place, if you have a problem, a, a legitimate problem, or even non-legitimate, you can go to the GM. The new GM that's coming in, we're incredibly excited. We're talking, he comes from Capitol Grill, Eddie B's, that territory, as far as high, higher end 
Um, he, he lives out he lives here, local, local guy. It, it, you know, in the East area. <laughs> He's a go getter. He comes from a, a, a family line. His father was in the business. He went to school for this. He worked good. Um, Hotels. Well, he's the one that probably, when he gets in here, should be posting on all the social media and well, not he'll start from no, those he'll, issues before they get the money. Okay, right. but let's let's. I also, as we're going down the path, let's also have this conversation. <coughs> if we overwhelm the GM with negativity or or frustration, I mean, a legitimate issue. That's what we need. To, that's what they're there for. But if we if it's constant for them, we'll keep we'll run through the games. This next one is really good. I don't want to see him run off because he can run the restaurant side of things. Because this is this is the biggest thing. We could actually, we have the ability, we could shut this down and only hold events here, and we make millions of dollars because all of those things are planned out. They they can get staff in, they can get product in, all that kind of stuff. The anomaly is the restaurant, and so you're balancing two totally different operations. And the restaurants true primarily for us and our guests and our friends. But do you want to have it fully staffed and pay those salaries? And then it rains, no one shows up. So we're constantly working this balance of how do we be financially, fiscally responsible. And that and that's what Kemper does. They've been flexing the weight staff. Well, ultimately, like, wouldn't that general manager be the one to make those calls? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And when he comes to someone, one of you seven guys, you have a point person so that he doesn't have to go to two or three different, yeah. different yes. we are the li liaisons. To but I would make one of you the point man. I mean, and that's just well, me. there's there's two because in the event that one of us isn't here, there's okay. a secondary that's already in communication on having to start up. So it's a it's a good model. But to your earlier point, if we want this place to be successful and have the continuity and consistency that it needs to have, we cannot we really do ourselves a disservice if we think that the board needs to get a call and jump in to help because that's not that's not going to work good in the long run. That's why I was asking about going to that manager. Yeah, me, so going to that manager. It's got to be a man. can go to you guys. Yeah, the next yeah, you don't have to. That's the that's model. That's why they're there. Well, that he's got an issue right. that he's beyond his pay grade. Right. But, no, no, right. Right. Um, well, he has, he, has a, he has an escalation yeah. process mm -hmm. through the county. Okay. Okay. We go up to this. So, both Evan and I were out of town last week in different places on, on vacation. Okay. I spent 20 hours doing right. doing HOA stuff on vacation. All my kids were like, <laughs> I got, I got texts here? from residents. There's no one down here. One so, last, I'm in California. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. So. Call the GM. <laughs> no, they were, they were, no, they were getting service. They were saying there's nobody oh, else here. I I, I'm just using an example. I got plenty of calls last week. You get no Long time ago, when we started doing this, the members was promised that we will have karaoke. It has not happened yet. Yeah, yeah. COVID put a little bit of a damper on that. Okay, well, COVID is the same thing. It's okay. not over, but why can't we're, why can't we're, we it's, have it down here? It's in the works. It's in the works. And that's a lot of upset. It was literally Every discussed yesterday. Again, yeah, we have a meeting on it yesterday. Good. Then I can tell you it's coming. It's right. coming. Just, just. Yeah, well, I can't tell you the date yeah. yet. Um, uh, Lynn Honeycutt. Um, so we have camper for five years. That's a contract. I was saying it was less than that. Okay, we have four years left. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. But, but I'm gonna let me go ahead and just add, add okay. just a little tidbit in there. If we we got to give, we, in my opinion, we got to give a little bit of a buffer because of a historic thing. Outside of that, as we move out of that, and if it is stable and running for us, the worst thing we could do is go look at that management fee and go, we can save that money and we can do better, and then go back to one of the old models that was already approved for failure. Because then you do get the board involved again. You wouldn't be able to go back to the old model. Huh. No, I'm not, no, saying, no, I'm not saying. Your liability would be not, so huge, and I'm, nobody 
with any no, shirt. I'm not, not saying that. I just, I just, so you have gonna, to bring in a professional I'm restaurant that that like a land I'm not saying that at all. I, I just don't mean that. like that. It was five years, but in. Scott told us, or me, or my husband, that, okay, we were contracted to Kemper for five years. I was thinking it was less, but um, they can, he, Scott told us that they could get dump us anytime they wanted to. Is that true? Not anytime. No, there, there are. All, that, there that's, are. That's what he told. Like any contractors, well, he's, he's not here. So I know, I know, but I'm not, I'm not making anything up. I'm just like saying he did say there that. are there are provisions in the contract for oh. exit strategies on both sides. Right, so. that's what I wanted to know. I'm not saying bring back somebody else. No. I just, the, the the thing that I get concerned about with this facility is the history. And so all of us that have been here for a long time know what that history is and we know what the downsides of it has been. We've seen it dark, all that sort of thing. We bring that to the table. That's part of our experience and our context when we come to the table, the past failures. This hasn't been tried. Unfortunately, when we were trying it, we ended up having several things that were completely out of our control and out of campers. Okay, so in, given all of the circumstances, it's it's the right path to 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 to, to go, but also to give them the appropriate time to resolve issues that they're that are here. Because it's the best. Honestly, I'd say we need them more than they need us. I mean, they can they can pull and go somewhere else. We not be in a good scenario because. I can guarantee you, we're not going to be able to run that. Any other questions? That's that, Mr. President. I would make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.